It's Infrastructure Week on the Daily Blog, and today we're talking about simulcast. I want to give a quick overview of what simulcast actually is, but we have a much more detailed explanation over at daily.co slash blog, or just look for a link in the description below. So, simulcast is WebRTC's secret weapon. It's a way to have a bunch of people on a call together and ensure that they're all having the best experience possible, that they're seeing the best video quality their internet connection allows, but that they're not using more bandwidth or processing power than they may need to. So, how does that work? Well, to start, we have another video in this series about mesh networking. It's linked in the description. In that one, we talked about how even though WebRTC is a peer-to-peer -peer standard, most of the more interesting use cases for WebRTC use servers as kind of super peers. There are a few different designs for WebRTC call servers. Daily uses selective forwarding units, or SFUs. SFUs don't do any processing on the media tracks they receive. Instead, they just selectively forward different tracks to different people. So if you have Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Deborah all in a call together, they can all be sending audio and video to the server. But maybe Bob only really needs to see Deborah's video and Charlie needs to see everybody. The server can choose who each person can see and hear by choosing which tracks it forwards to each person. But what if Bob's connection is terrible? Maybe he went to go work at a coffee shop for the morning, but he forgot that that meeting was rescheduled to today. And now I'm trying to do a video call on spotty Wi-Fi and that kid over there is streaming Netflix and he's listening on his laptop speakers like some kind of monster. And now I'm dropping packets like crazy. Like Bob is dropping packets like crazy. If Bob is trying to see everybody's video at 720p, but he doesn't have the bandwidth, he's going to see freezes and occasional black frames. In fact, it might look like this. I'm simulating 20% packet loss on my connection right now. As I'm sure you can tell, it's looking pretty bad. Let me turn this back off and hopefully things will recover. What would be ideal for Bob would be if Alice and Charlie and Deborah all dropped the quality of the video they were sending. We'll show that with these thin little lines like this. Now, you've probably seen something similar happen if you like watch a video on YouTube on hotel Wi-Fi. It'll start the video in HD, it'll stutter and freeze a few times, then it'll drop down to 240p or whatever and play successfully. But if Alice and Charlie and Deborah all start sending postage stamp size video for Bob's sake, then they're all seeing bad video too, even though they don't really need to. They were responsible. They stayed home on better internet. Bob shouldn't get to make everybody have bad video. They should be frowning too. There, that's better. Maybe the server could handle this for us. Well, all the server is doing is forwarding whatever tracks it's receiving. If it also had to process video and downsample or whatever, it would dramatically reduce the number of participants it could handle, and it would add considerable latency to the video streams, which would kill interactivity. That's where simulcast comes in. What if each person could create a high, medium, and low quality version of their own video and send that to the server? Then the server could just, you know, selectively forward the right quality of video to each person. So Alice, Charlie, and Deborah all get to see nice high quality video from each other, and Bob gets to at least see some video. At least everybody but Bob is smiling again. Part of why this works is that modern video codecs like VP8, VP9, H.264, they all have ways to very cheaply generate the medium and low quality feeds from the original high quality feed. They use things like integer rescaling and dropping frames. This part is called transrating, which is technically something different than transcoding. There's more info about that down in the blog post. Now, we call these layers, low, medium, and high quality video coming from each participant. Layer zero is the lowest quality and it goes up to layer two for the highest. And something chooses which layer each person receives for each video track. That choice can be made automatically or manually, and it can be made to an extent by the SFU or the participant. The WebRTC standards help us out with the automatic part. There's a mechanism built into the protocol itself to monitor network throughput over each of these connections. The server can use that data to change which layer it's choosing to send to a particular participant. So Bob can get the right video without you having to do anything. But there are also cases where you may want to control this from the participant end. So for example, this is our active speaker view in daily pre-built. It's designed to do layer two, the highest quality video for this main view on the left, but the videos on the right are so small that I don't need a 720p video for these. If I'm pulling down 720p here, I'm wasting bandwidth to download it and wasting CPU power to decode it. So Prebuild actually subscribes to layer zero, the lowest quality for all these videos here. 
Now, if Deborah becomes the active speaker, Prebuilt changes that subscription from layer zero to layer two when she moves over here, and it moves Alice back over here and drops her subscription to layer zero. And if Bob speaks up, he's still on bad internet, so he's actually only sending layer zero, so that's what the server sends to everybody, even though Prebuilt is asking for layer two here. But if that kid leaves and Bob's internet recovers, he can start sending all three layers again, and the server will start sending layer two as soon as it's available from Bob. Now, there's a lot more to learn about simulcast layers than what I can fit in this video. At Daily, we try to offer the best of both worlds. We give you APIs to adjust simulcast settings really easily if you want, but we also have a set of really sensible defaults that we found work really well for most general purpose use cases. But we have a lot of good info on the blog and on our doc site for circumstances where you might wanna change the defaults. Simulcast is how Daily scales WebRTC calls to tens of thousands of people. For more on that, check out the video on interactive live streaming.